Hello, my name is Michael. I am a concept artist and animator, and I'm working on a little short movie, or more or less the teaser for a short movie or for a for a world that I am constructing. And I just wanted to ramble along about a couple of things that. Uh, that I think about while painting uh, because I am just in the mood. It's not a tutorial, it's just um, thoughts concerning the project, concerning the process uh, without any specific order. So um, I didn't record it from the beginning uh, just because I didn't assume that this image is go uh, was going to go anywhere, but um, in the beginning stages it looked like this All right this is a scene from a teaser that i'm working on and uh, i will probably get get back to this topic later but um, the point is um, i'm creating a teaser and i will animate it but the animation style is uh, yeah well it's a uh, 2D parallax mainly with a little bit of puppet animation uh, mainly because it's the most efficient one so and I started out with uh, this image and the way I go about this is I take some kind of photos slap them on top of each other with some kind of mix mode and uh, smudge around until I see something that might be interesting for me. So this was the, the first image and uh, later on... No, this was actually the first image. Yeah, I can see there's a planet and there is some tech stuff slapped on top of it. Then I smudged it. Then I slapped even some more stuff on, on top of it and I started to see something, uh, an interesting composition. And this is the way I like to work because um, photo images have, or photo texture, they have a certain density that inspires me. And my task is to put structure into this whole thing. Because as interesting as it looks, because your brain might interpret, it, interpret the stuff in, in any kind of way, uh, you have to make it readable for uh, other people. Yeah, so I tried to put in more perspective, more light that made sense. And in the end, um, not in the end, but the current stage is something like this. So, um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure if this is the best direction, but my goal here is just to go with the flow and take whatever comes along because I don't want to waste time. I've wasted enough time as it is because I'm usually someone who pursues or who tries to stick with the initial vision. But the reality is, especially with my workflow, that the vision is not the best. Uh, you have, well, like, uh, I see it with many people, they call it perfectionism, but I do not agree with this type of symptom. Uh, I think it's just um, control, not a control disorder, but you're trying to control something that is maybe shouldn't be controlled in the way most people think. Okay, this was a little bit convoluted, but my point is a vision is only a direction. Then you have to free up your mind for any inspiration that comes along and as you can see um, this is what I have developed so far. So uh, in this scene the idea is that there is a robot android type of guy who stands in a abandoned and broken down hallway. Um, yeah it's just what this image is telling me and this is what I'm trying to render out here and I like the lighting effects I, I just like the composition I like the perspective it's like three point and uh, you have a ton of rubble and tubes here and um, this is what I like this is what I'm doing with the world the world itself is, is a post cyberpunk or nuclear punk whatever you want to call it uh, type of world it's uh, inhabited by androids um, it's unclear if humans exist or not but it's very dy dystopic it's not necessarily post-apocalyptic it's just hyper dystopic it's like super industrialized 
until um, it suffocated basically the planet. Yes, uh, there is more to it, but um, I don't want to waste time on the um, background of the whole world and just more focus on the process. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get this stuff into an animated um, um, setup. But as I do so, I try to render out a couple of things more to give it more readability and more detail. So right now uh, I'm trying to dissect it into layers. The color grading is not perfect. I'm not very happy with it. Um, I like this 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 tur turquoise turquoise type of tones with this green. I always love uh, orange, but there are some tones that I dislike. For instance, this here this looks like um, skin tone a little bit for me and I do not like it that much so I have to do something about this but I think overall the theme is okay so um, usually I try to work on one layer in th at this stage and get good colors in one layer and then later on uh, dissect it but the problem is um, I'm kind of an, in, in an in-between state um, because <clears throat> usually when I work on an image, I love to use the smudge tool. You know, this, the smudge tool allows me to mix colors and make it create interesting gradients. It's a super efficient tool that mimics certain physical effects of lighting. Uh, yeah, of light very well, um, but um, yeah, this is uh, also a, a, a whole rabbit hole on itself. Um, yeah, so whenever I dissect it in different layers, I cannot do it as efficiently anymore because uh, obviously you get you have to focus on the layers where you are, and so I'm trying to risk it now and dissect it into different layers. And uh, I have already excluded this character here. And uh, what I want to do is the following, because this character is going to move in the animation a little bit. Uh, at least he will be scaled, so you have a kind of parallax effect. But he still exists in the background. And there is one neat trick. You can make a selection from the character and go on your original layer. And um, actually, yes, like this. Oh, sorry, it's a German version, but you can fill the space and there is a content uh, based type of filling. So it's, it's a semi smart uh, algorithm that actually takes crap from from the surrounding area and fills it. So uh, this is a quick way to have at least some type of texture at the place where this object was you know it, it it kind of fills in the gap you know something like this um, ah, not sure maybe I'll, I'll need that but this thing I will not need and this I won't need either okay so um, I actually see something that I want to enhance uh, what I what I'm doing usually is I look for geometry uh, or stuff that my brain interprets as geometry, and I try to um, I try to get light in these areas, and uh, this happens quite well if you use gradients, so either a huge soft brush or a textured brush, and uh, create a fall off. Um, sometimes softer is better. And as you can see, this creates some kind of or enhances a geometrical shape that was there uh, just to help the eye understand what's going on. But uh, maybe this is not ne necessary in this uh, point because this char character will not move that much, right? So, yeah, this is the character. The next thing that I want to dissect is this weird block in front, because obviously this will have a lot of parallax movement. And I'm not even sure what this is. Probably rubble. And, uh, yeah, so you have to... 
I will make a different approach. So yeah, I have to select it out and it will be also in front of the character. All right, something like this. Again, this um, is it's just more like an uh, public um, how do you call it? Hmm. Uh, it's like a public entry of my thoughts. There's no specific uh, marketing agenda behind this video. I'm just, um, yeah, I'm just in the mood for talking and recording. All right, so I copy it into a new layer. Something like this select it and fill it with content. Blap. That works quite well. You can smudge over the edges so the transition will be a little bit softer at these points. But all in all, this works quite well. So, what this allows me to do is push the characters more into the foreground. Um, one of the main things to push elements is to make uh, the silhouette be more readable. And uh, this there's an easy trick, especially with this situation. You've got light from the back, so it probably will create a glow on the camera lens. And I will imitate this glow, you know, and I will... I will save myself from drawing more details in the background because uh, the lighting will over light this whole uh, place, not over shadow, but over light in this regard. And as you can see, the silhouette is better readable. And the same goes for this place. And I will do it in a separate layer, something like this, and maybe add a cone or something like this because it's it will be probably a um, filthy place with a lot of with a lot of smoke um, floating not smoke but dust particles floating through the air something like this yeah now you see the deficits of the silhouette but I will get to this in a bit uh, so, yeah, and I have my trash here in front. There's also the option of putting a layer between the character and the trash. So they get separated a little bit. And usually I like to have a brighter spot at the bottom. Or um, if, if I'm working with gradients, uh, for the gradients to go... Um, to get lighter towards the bottom uh, because the most important thing is the face and the upper part of the body and uh, this has to stay contrasty and readable so the eye gets um, gets focused on this area and it's starting to read way way better I mean it's it's clearer the um, or should I say the layering is way more clear that way like imagine a um, disable it I mean it looks interesting but this creates way more separation and I can still in the animation process um, all these layers will be separately and maybe they won't be as strong or they will be moving or something like this so yeah you have I, I will still balance them probably uh, what I also like to do here is to um, um, uh, do, 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 to uh, put on smoke. I have a bunch of smoke brushes, so just to get a little bit more texture in this whole scene. Yeah, something like this. Looks already more interesting. You know, like some smoke is, is coming up. This is also stuff that can be animated. 
uh, right now for image sake i will it's static of course uh, later on in after effects i will give it also a little bit of movement but yeah again this is a very different rabbit hole and maybe something for another video uh, so yes something like this looks nice yeah so the next thing i what i always have to force myself to do is to work down the most crucial points and the next big thing would be to modify the silhouette of the character and just to get rid of these ugly pieces because it looks like uh, I let the lasso tool right and I'll just um, go along the edges and um, I'm not sure if I'm... No, I'm not smudging them. Yeah, you can erase them, you can smudge them, whatever. Just get rid of this yeah, digital footprint. I don't like it. And add a little bit of painterly elements. You know, maybe some ripped pieces in his clothes or something, whatever. Just looks way more interesting that way less digital <clears throat> so something like this um, yeah and again I would have loved to show the process how I got to this idea but this is a process or a part that where I'm very very nervous and I am um, I'm not sure if this goes anywhere or if it doesn't uh, because I need this the freedom to throw away images and when I record over something I, I have the pressure to actually deliver something so it would be easier for me to record the process and then to make a voice over or something like this so it's uh, I'm not under that much pressure and it's for me it's easier to um, to uh, recapitulate on my thoughts after the image has been made but yeah this is due to my workflow um, I like to create uh, as much um, throwaway stuff as it's necessary Because otherwise you get stuck. I mean, the idea with this project here, and I'm not even sure if I'm gonna finish it, the idea um, here is to create as much, um, or ha d don't stand in my own way. This is the idea of the project. Just go with the flow, take whatever works best and is most efficient instead of trying to polish the shit out of it and never finishing it actually this is the idea uh, for me okay so do we have an error here no ah this is the silhouette okay all right yeah this silhouette also looks like crap has to ch be changed a little bit And I love using uh, smudge tools. Um, in this case, it's a hard smudge tool and it doesn't create gradients. It still creates uh, relatively hard edges, but not too hard. Uh, they have a little bit of a fall off, so it blends together way better than uh, if I cut it out with a lasso or something like this. Well, not sure if I'm gonna leave it like this, but I just wanted to to have a more interesting silhouette uh, quickly on the fly. Okay, something like this. So where are the glowing eyes? There they are. Okay, and it reads better. I mean, it's still not clear what this shit here is. I you know it doesn't make sense, but um, alone the the sil the silhouette alone helps me a lot to understand what's going on and all of these layers can have a little bit of animation at least at least this is my style how i like to do it and uh, the static image will have a lot more life that way so 
there's another layer on top uh, and the, the effect layer and I need to have this um, sometimes on and off just to see what kind of areas I shouldn't care about too much because um, in the back here there's a lot of detail missing but does it make sense to paint it not necessarily because you have all this crap on top which um, would just add up to noise if I would leave it like this yeah so um, this is the the state so far what should I do next mm. I'm still not sure about the amount of light because to be honest it looks too friendly for my taste it looks way too friendly namely the entrance is too bright yeah i will reduce it he here i'm not sure it it should hmm. i'm not sure what to do about it well anyway it's a separate layer so it, it would make sense to have this light here but I'm I'm unsure about this anyway okay so what else um, hmm. what I could do now just to um, just to end the video on um, reasonable note is to show you how I use reference material and uh, this is also the same way how this image uh, has been um, conceived. I have uh, usually tons of folders with tons of images that I ripped from Pinterest or Google or some kind of um, photo stock photo site. It, it depends what I'm looking for uh obviously um yeah, and again uh, like having a good idea how to uh, to know what you're looking for in terms of reference material is uh is vital but uh this is also a rabbit hole and uh, maybe at some point i will talk about it but uh, for instance uh, i use um an an app called fast stone image viewer and it helps me to quickly scan through the images. And uh, what I recently did, and I can always um, suggest doing this, is uh, taking stills from movies, because uh, it helps me to think about how to set up an image in um, in movie terms, you know. <clears throat> Um, or how the the director of photography or the, the director in general how they try to talk through images it helps and you can also take the colors uh, from such an image which is uh, always helpful and obviously i try to go about it in a hybrid type of way a little bit cinematographical approach and a little bit a concept art type of approach you know like treat it as a painting treat it as a limited type of parallax animation and treat it like a movie still <clears throat> yeah anyway i have tons of stuff from alien 3 which is maybe my favorite movie <laughs> um yeah uh, and uh, shortly followed by Alien 1, but uh, because I love the dystopian world which it plays in, and I love the focus on characters a lot, a lot, a lot. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a huge fan of this movie, and um, it inspired me a lot. Anyway, so what I'm doing usually is um, it depends on which, where I am, and which stage. But as you have seen, the very first image was just yeah a random, more or less <clears throat> random, some of some kind of reference images that I glued together. But now, when the content kind of stands, I try to be more 
selective about uh, how I go about it. And um, so I'm trying to copy this image. It doesn't always work for some reason. Now it does. And what I'm trying to do here is take elements from this image and try to incorporate it into my frame. And uh, one element that I'll really like is his jacket here. Whoops. So I'm going to take it and try to position it where I want to have it. And it already looks very interesting. Something like this. So now I have to decide how to go about it because, yeah, there are many things to take, uh, yeah, to, to think about. First is the perspective, of course, and it is kind of right. I have already skewed it a little bit and distorted it a little bit, a little bit, but you can, you know, do it even more. Then you have to think about the silhouette, and um, of course it won't work everywhere because we have a hard cut, so we can just erase it softly into the other image. So the idea is uh, there might be another light source coming from the top or something like this. Uh, that illuminates his jacket. Maybe, maybe, if we want to leave it like this. We can mix it together slightly just to have a little bit more detail and it looks awesome the way it is, actually. Or we can go through a blend mode and see if this works. I mean, this is also very acceptable in my... Uh, in my from my point of view. And I think I'm going to leave it like that. So how will it mix? Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, looks nice. And it gives me an, an idea, you know, it's like, uh, why not? Why not have another light source on top? So we could slap some of the blue light also on his forehead and on his nose and maybe somewhere on his upper lip and chin and see how this works. So. So it will probably be something like this and maybe not as strong. Mm, not sure. Not sure it's not ideal because it, it, looks, it looks like he has a mustache, which I don't like. Yeah. Hmm wasn't uh, as effective as I thought, but yeah, it's also difficult because there is a lot of um, red glow coming from the eyes. So maybe it will only be a little rim light on top. And possibly what we could also work is this area, this, sh this shadow part. So maybe the light comes from also from the side or something like this. I know. Yeah, that looks cool. I, l I love the transition between red and blue um, because it doesn't disappear into some black um, shadow, but the shadow itself has a color and this makes the image look always more interesting in my opinion. Yeah, this looks quite badass, um, you know, and so you can fill in the image with details in this way. But you have uh, once the um, the content is there uh, or the idea is there, you can flesh it out by slapping more and more textures on top. And if you want to have a painterly look, you can just uh, smudge over it a little bit and smudge it into into whatever was uh, below uh, the reference material, you know, so it has a hybrid type of look, which I like because I love the density of photo images, but I also love the roughness of um, of strokes of, of uh, yeah, brush strokes. OK, so something like this, I mean, l later I, I already see things that could be optimized, maybe um, push his silhouette even more, you know, give him some 
I don't know, some type of um, what it's called, collar around his neck or something like this to push the silhouette. But for now, it's this this idea is quite cool. And I will repeat this process uh, and try to find something for uh, this area because it's too, it's too naked for my taste. I'd like to have some details here up front. And uh, yeah, I go by the same process. I open up my reference folder and look at some kind of junk that I could put in front. I mean, here, look, Skywalker's hand. Let's see if this works. Uh, Rip. And I try to go with a mode that only lets the bright parts of the image through. Yeah, I see something. I like the colors that it creates. Well, s some modes create uh, different colors than others, of course. And this is something you can definitely make use of. And align it something like this. I mean, not everything is ideal here, of, of course. And I'm still not very happy about the silhouette, but I will take care of it um, later yeah but um, you get some interesting highlights that you can work with you know some stuff is uh, intersecting mm, in a way that doesn't make a lot of sense and some stuff is interesting and could be enhanced for instance this green little piece here whatever this might be just some kind of reflection or something you know, and uh, from the original image, barely anything is left. You know, it's just a texture that is supposed to inspire. Well, anyway, yeah, something like this. Um, I would have to go through way more uh, images to uh, find something suitable for here, but I will do this off camera because, uh, yeah, I think this video is long enough. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Until next time.